Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leadership Circle interview. It's a pleasure to have with me today Fahad al Haqbani, the co-founder and CEO of Armour Sports Company. Uh, Armour are one of the largest portfolio companies of fitness and wellness brands in the Middle East region, and it really is an honor to have him here. Fahad, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you're now 20 plus years into a fantastic career in the fitness industry. Congratulations, thanks for your leadership across these last few decades. Let me pick your brain and try and reflect back on a few uh, milestones, if you will, a few highlights from the last 20 years. Thank you, Ross. It's a pleasure speaking with you again. And I'm deeply honored to be part of one of uh, Fit Summit uh, activities. I really appreciate what you guys are doing to bring this industry together, especially in such a difficult time. Coming back to your question, it's been actually a pleasure uh, and fun uh, being around this industry for so many years as I witnessed the revolution in the fitness industry globally. You know, um, we live in a very dynamic industry. It's so much fun and you can see many trends happening in the past. Um, we used to see trends coming every year or two, but nowadays we can see trends coming every month, every week, and sometimes every day. So if I look to the, to the journey, one of the greatest things that happened to me is um, this industry enabled me to meet great people uh, around, around, uh, uh, around this industry uh, and great, great minds as well. Uh, if I speak about the accomplishments or the highlights we've done in the past, I think one of the one of the best was winning um, the Sports Creativity Award out of Dubai, given by oh. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, the ruler of Dubai. And this award, they they don't give you this award because you have the best clubs or you have the best facilities. They give it to you simply if you contribute to the community. And back then we had our mission to improve the lifestyle of Saudi, which we did. And in return, we won this award after competing with 262 applicants. Um, also after reaching uh, 150 uh, clubs, we have entered the top 15 ERSA ranking uh, in terms of wholly owned clubs, which was like a great accomplishment, which put us and Saudi on the international map. Um, I also, in 2017, I was invited to Rex, which is um, a round table for executives, for uh, fitness, like-minded people, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and, um, and founders of clubs chains around the world. For me, I present the Middle East, but I have now uh, great friends around, around Rex. Um, we meet uh, on a regular basis uh, to exchange knowledge and experience around the fitness industry. Uh, also, we have signed, um, uh, in 2015, we have signed um, a uh, sponsorship agreement with FC Barcelona for the commercial rights. And on the other hand, we signed with them also um, the rights for the academy, FCB Escola. And we brought this academy to Saudi um, mainly because we wanted to influence the Saudi kids with the Barca values. We know that there is a lot of good aspects that comes with football, uh, um, other than the technical aspects, including um, sportsmanship, uh, respect, acceptance of uh, acceptance to lose, uh, respect your opponent, uh, and teamwork. So we wanted to influence the kids with these uh, values and we were successful because we ran thousands of kids through the program. Well, look, congratulations, Fahad. This is the reason why I think Saudi Arabia and the Middle East has come so far in the past couple of years and been recognized as a, a center of investment and a center of excellence now in fitness. We're seeing so much positivity now come from the region. It really is uh, exciting to see and again thank you for leading that one of the things you'll be leading of course is the fitness and wellness revolution in saudi but with this of course with the huge growth of clubs now uh, you're on such a huge growth trajectory and no doubt like everyone else covid and the pandemic has halted that you've had to overcome challenges looking back over the past 12 months fahad can you pinpoint maybe two or three of the key challenges 
that you've been able to overcome as a business? I think the, uh, the main challenge was to stay focused and united. I mean, mental uh, health is uh, a key factor for myself and my team. Uh, during the first lockdown or the second lockdown, we remained optimistic and focused. Um, we also um, spent a lot of time to utilize the last 12 months in uh, innovation and cracking big nuts and also to improve on a personal level and a, and a business level as well. And the second challenge was um, how to adapt to the new normal. I mean, how to change our strategy. So we decided finally to tweak our strategy to adapt to the, uh, to the changes. And we decided to follow the path of a hybrid model where we have our bricks and mortar. At the same time, we're offering a strong digital uh, platform. Personally, I don't believe that the hybrid model is a big uh, game changer. Uh, we had to react to the changes. And this is one of the, uh, the challenges that we are still facing, but we, are, we continue to tweak the strategies because we lived through 2020 and now we're in 2021, new things are happening. Um, so we have made a decision, for example, two years ago to invest in technology. Uh, but today, uh, with the current circumstances, I believe that more investment in technology yet to be made in terms of funds, efforts, time, or even direction. The last thing I would say is um, the financial challenge. I think everybody is suffering around the world from this. I think it's a, a global crisis. So what we have done is um, we have changed our plans. Um, uh, we have tweaked the plans again and um, build more precautions and more cushions into it. I think every um, market will uh, react differently to the financial challenges, uh, but this is what we're doing. We're, um, we're expecting the wars and we're, we're planning for it. We thought that uh, COVID will, will end in 2020 like everyone else, but now we're in 2021 and it's still around us. So it's, uh, it's a lesson learned. Last time we spoke, Fahad, of course, we talked more about this, the growth of the holistic offering to consumers. And you and indeed yourselves at Arma were actually now building more holistic health clubs. How has that journey been from you in trying to look at the core business of fitness, but then evolve to also add in the offers, offerings of digital, well-being, mindfulness, etc.? What are your thoughts on that? Okay, after leaving our previous business with 150 clubs, uh, we didn't want to repeat ourselves. I believe that the days of um, traditional fitness clubs are over, if you want to stay competitive. Um, it would be very easy for us if we go back and we copy what we've done in the past and do it again. But yet we decided to uh, challenge ourselves and to be innovative and to take the path of the club of the future, something that I was personally inspired by, uh, by Rex during our meetings and discussions with Fausto or with the team. Uh, so the main direction in the new uh, business is to build a strong IT infrastructure. And this IT infrastructure will support our vision for the smart club. The smart club is an ecosystem where human digital um, and physical uh, objects come together and speak to each other to deliver uh, the maximum experience uh, for the audience. So in the past, we used to build clubs and grow the network as much as we can, as fast as we can. And then we stop and we think about technology. But today we're doing the complete opposite where we build the technology uh, backbone and then we build the clubs on top of it. And after two years of hard work, I can, I can proudly say that the team managed to pull it uh, off. I mean, um, um, we have achieved uh, many great uh, milestones and achievements uh, in uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. We felt that we smashed uh, 2020 with those achievements. Mainly those achievements were in technology while enjoying building our 14 uh, uh, clubs locations, which are under construction uh, as we speak. 
now part of this journey is staying close to your customer, Fahad, and um, being so connected to technology allows you to be there with your customer. Having a look in the last 12 months, you must have noticed some trends across the consumer and member base, not only as clubs closed, but as clubs reopened. And I know, of course, just now where you are in Saudi, you're currently undergoing the second uh, lockdown. Very frustrating, but again, maybe some time to reflect again on how the current consumer trends and behavior are shaping your long-term strategy. What are you seeing from the consumer and how is that impacting your strategy? Okay, as I mentioned before, I mean, trends are happening more often right now. And today we are hardly catching up with, uh, with new trends. They are coming up like every day or every week, as I said. Um, from home workout to new apps to new concepts. So maybe the, uh, the most um, thing that dragged my attention was Macrogems because it serves um, small group training and personal training. And if you look to the global uh, top trends in the, or fitness trends in the last few years, you will find personal training and small group training uh, are there. So today uh, the macro gyms ca caters to these categories, which is an interesting concept and we're keeping um, uh, an eye on it. Of course, at home workout continues to surprise us uh, either before the pandemic and they grew even stronger through the pandemic. Take Peloton, Mirror, Tonal, Fight Camp, and the interesting uh, Wall Unit Yoga Three Sages. All of them are doing a great job, and it's, it's a great technology as well. Um, speaking to our suppliers and partners around the world, we know that the people are buying home accessories like never before. The numbers are rocketing, and at the same time, the suppliers' warehouses are drained and overwhelmed trying to uh, comply with the, uh, with the high demand. Uh, I would say also, um, I, always, uh, I always say uh, that the um, open spaces are becoming way more important than equipment. You can see that the new clubs comes with an open spaces and less equipment. I'll tell you a simple example. In the past, we used to buy 100 plus pieces of cardios uh, for our clubs. And today we're planning something between 30 and 40. So this is like a dramatic drop uh, in the numbers of equipment, but because we believe that offering more spaces and more playground for our members are also important. Having said that, uh, and talking about technology and the trends, I don't believe that there is a strong and solid online digital platform today. You have, um, different players in the market, but they're offering inconsistent content. So I really, I'm really looking forward to see one solid uh, holistic uh, digital uh, platform. Yeah, this is a very interesting one for us as well, Fahad. I think there are no shortage of players coming into the market in the content space. Each of them has their own niche and each of them does it very, very well but somebody at some point is going to build the content platform to end all content platforms. And that's going to be an incredibly exciting race, not just for the industry, but of course for the consumer. Now let's talk about partnerships because you have had great experience and you continue to have great experience in partnering with technology companies, with suppliers, with distributors. You mentioned groups like Rex, who of course, who do a great job but you must be offered a ton of partnerships every single day, Fahad. How do you assess what works for a partnership with you? What makes the right ingredients for the right partnership? And maybe an example of two, maybe aside from Rex, of partnerships that you value. Actually, it's uh, one of my favorite subjects because we have maintained perfect relationships and partnerships around the world in the last 20 years. I remember when I joined uh, my brothers in the business, uh, in the first uh, fitness club chain, uh, I was young in high school back then. And uh, shortly after, uh, I became the face of the international communication and I really enjoyed it. Uh, for me, partnerships is all about respect uh, and trust. Uh, we have done uh, great deals and great business with all our partners and our suppliers around the world for 15 plus years. 
without having contracts. It was simply based on a handshake. And this is the trust uh, and respect that I talk about. Uh, but we, in 2018, when we were ready to take our previous business to the IPO and take the company to the public uh, market, uh, we had to comply with corporate governance. So um, uh, CMA here, uh, the Capital Market Authority, um, uh, one of the regulations was to uh, document all the contracts. So we had to document them. But um, other than that, we were happy dealing with all uh, of our partners globally based on trust and respect. I would say also identifying um, a successful partnership for us uh, will be a combination of different things. Uh, including shared vision, uh, commitment of collaboration, support, reliability of products and services. This is also important. I would suggest that you should meet with your partners on a regular basis. Uh, in the past, face-to-face. -face. Uh, nowadays, you can use any online platform to communicate. And I think this communication, whether it's informal or formal, we revive the, the partnership and the relationship and we'll grow it even stronger. Well, I think you've got a great examples there, Fahad, of relationships that have gone through the good, the bad and the ugly and continue to add value on either side. Let's maybe move, uh, move focus now. I read in a recent interview with our partners at HCM, a fantastic magazine, about a latest initiative you have with Amazon and its Alexia project. Could you share a little bit more about that, please? Okay, um, it's, it's confidential, but I'm happy to, uh, to shed more lights and give you more details, something I didn't, uh, didn't say before. Um, uh, but first, let me uh, thank my uh, two mentors in life, uh, my brother Abdel Mehsen, who's my oldest brother, who introduced me to this industry when I was young, and also uh, Fausto uh, Digirio, uh, our CEO of the Rex International Group, who always pushes me to innovate and to be the best version of myself. And uh, they both have a great, great trust uh, in me. Uh, Fausto always says that um, um, voice control is going to be the world's future of communication. Um, and I listen to him and I believe him as I always do. So I took this and I went back and I thought, how can we bring voice commands and voice controls into our clubs. And one day the idea clicked after I watched a video uh, about uh, Alexa for business. And immediately we reached out to Amazon and our IT director, uh, he spent almost six months of R&D with Amazon team um, uh, for the, to, to, to work on the proof of concept because you can see Alexa at home, you can see Alexa in corporate offices, uh, which is Alexa for business. You can see some of the hotels having Alexa to control, you know, lights and different things in the room, but it never happened in the, in the fitness space. But I'm happy to tell you today that um, we will be the first club in the world that enables members to book services through Alexa. So you can book classes, you can check mem uh, you can check trainer's schedule, and also you can check trainer's bio all through Alexa. And of course, we are still working with Amazon team to add more content and to improve, to enable Alexa be more helpful for, uh, for the members and for us. Well, thanks for that, Shu. That is an incredibly exciting time for you, Fahad. So congratulations to you and the R&D team for getting that up and running. Look forward to seeing it in action. Now, once this pandemic's ahead, the future is undeniably bright for this industry and especially for yourself. You've got so much plan with investments into your club businesses. Can you give us a couple of milestones coming up? I know you've got not only BFIT, but Optimo as well. But what's coming up on the horizon for you and your club business? I mean, uh, as I mentioned before, it's an, a dynamic and fun industry to work in. And every year it's an excitement here for us. We simply love what we do. Uh, we, woke up, we wake up every, every day excited uh, to work in this industry because uh, not 
only because we're having fun, because we're changing people's lives. And changing people's lives is part of changing the world to be a better place. And this is something that I always dreamt of. Uh, coming back to your question, and as I mentioned before, we have 14 uh, clubs now under construction as we speak, and those are scheduled to open between 2021 and 2022. So Optimo, which is the high-end offering, uh, it's a hotel experience. Uh, this will open, is set to open in June 2021. We have BeFit, which is the premium offering. It's uh, for the people brand and it's set to open in April 2021. And we also uh, launched the development of our um, uh, budget offering and we call it uh, Train and this will open next year. So these are our three offerings from high end to premium to budget offering. Uh, and to be honest with you, we don't want to build uh, 150 clubs that like what we did in the past. This is a box that we checked and a dream that we achieved. And today we want to build a small and intimate mm -hmm. network uh, focusing on service. Uh, in the past, we were leaders in terms of numbers uh, across the Middle East. And as I mentioned, we reached number 15 worldwide. But today we want to be leaders in service. And honestly speaking, having 30 clubs in very prime locations and delivering a great service and experience to members is far way important and, and for us uh, than having 100 clubs scattered around the country. Uh, so this is, was like a lesson learned the hard way for us. Well, raising the benchmark in any industry, Fahad, is of course um, very challenging, but it's like exactly what we need to do as an industry, continue to raise the bar. I really resonate with your last comment about trying to make people happier and healthier. Now, when it comes to happier, of course, one of the key words there is mental well-being, mental health. How are you looking at that as part of the holistic offering in tomorrow's marketplace? Yes, people can get fit, but it's important they stay well. How are you addressing that in your future clubs? Okay, first, I, first, I would like to say that uh, mental health has extremely low awareness in Saudi compared to the rest of the world. And uh, as we are leaders in the uh, uh, physical fitness uh, space, we also want to be pioneers in bringing the mental health and raise the awareness about it in Saudi and beyond. Uh, because we believe and we see that uh, mental health and physical health are growing uh, seemingly uh, in the future. So what we are doing is we're um, adding mental health component uh, to our app. We are, we are changing our classes mix to rebalance between um, physical fitness and mental fitness. For example, to add more yoga, recovery, um, uh, stretching and meditation to our classes mix. Uh, we are also planning to launch um, a mental um, uh, health awareness campaign uh, every year. And we're adding the mental health uh, component also to our uh, staff training. This is what we love to see, Fahad. I think going forward, this more holistic offering will be prime. I think it's really going to be the driver for where people want to invest in, not just individually, but of course, from a, an employee standpoint. Uh, with employees now chasing corporate health and well-being. One last question, uh, Fahad, and let's, we'll break up after that. But turning the spotlight back on you personally, um, 20 years in the industry, we touched on some of the achievements and, and they're fantastic. But maybe look, looking at yourself personally from a life lessons perspective, what have the last couple of years taught you about you as an individual, you as a leader, and, and what lessons has the last 12 to 18 months allowed you to take forward? So personally, uh, I'm very lucky because I have great uh, friends and great uh, uh, colleagues around and uh, they helped me to be more positive in the last couple of years. So the mantra today is positive vibes only. And um, I would really like to thank uh, my team because uh, we managed to stick together in hard times uh, as well as good times which is very important for me. Also, I learned to accept and expect the worst while also hoping for the best. 
this is something uh, we learned uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, also, to I learned that uh, becoming a leader is far way important than becoming a manager. And finally, I would say to accept the changes. Uh, I mean, something I learned from uh, Rex and from Fausto uh, personally, uh, to be creative, you have to push the boundaries and go out of your comfort zone if you want to be creative. So accepting, accepting the change, accepting people's opinion, and also uh, don't push back on new ideas. Always accept listening and accept new ideas, whether you do it at the end or you don't, but at least keep your, uh, your ears open for what's coming. Well, Fahad, I think that's a good positive ending to, uh, to finish up on. Positive vibes only, ladies and gentlemen. That is definitely a good mantra for 2021 and beyond. Uh, Fahad, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for your inspiration and in continuing to lead and build uh, the fitness and wellness industry across the Middle East. Uh, we wish you and your team continued success. All the very best with the new openings and look forward to seeing you soon in 2021. Thank you, Ross. It was a pleasure again to speak to you.